Hello everyone, this is Alejandro. On this tutorial, we will see how we can use the particle system on Spline to create all sorts of different particle effects. All right, let's begin. All right, so I have an empty scene in here. So I want to create the new particles by just pressing on the plus icon. And then I go here, it's called particle emitter. So already by default, I can already see some particles, which is pretty cool. So let me just zoom in a little bit. And let me switch to the perspective camera in here. Already by default, you can see uh, a few options here on the sidebar, right? So starting from the top, we see the color A and color B. So color A will be the starting point and color B will be the end point for the colors. So you can see that the color goes from this pink to a uh, yellowish. We also see uh, coloring and there is two modes. There is blend and there is random. If I choose random. What happens is that now the particles colors are going to be random colors in between those two colors. Let's switch back to blend. Then we have the size parameter. You can see if I can increase the size, uh, it just gets bigger. And then there is rotation. We can see how that works later. And there is a bit rate. So the bit rate is like the amount of particles that are generated uh, each time, right? So if I increase the bit rate, you can see now I have a lot more particles being generated. The lifetime indicates how long the particles will be visible or how long they will live. And by default it's one second, but if I change this to two seconds, that means that the particles will stay there for longer. And in this case, you will see their movement for a longer time. Then we have the fading, right? So we have two types of fading. One is the alpha fade, which means that the particles start with a full opacity here, and then they go here, and now it's uh, zero opacity. And then you can change the interpolation mode. So for example, if I use is in and out, so that means that it starts transparent and then it ends transparent. So it's a little more smooth. And then we have the size phase. The size phase is the same thing. It's basically changing the size of the particle over time. So if I change it to constant, for example, that means that the particles will have the same size across the entire lifetime. And I can change the size in here and you will see that they stay in the same size. But if I change it back to something like linear or is in and out, you will see that now they start very small and now at the end they get small as well. And in the middle it's like it's bigger. Uh, then we have the speed. Uh, let me just go back here to maybe constant in size. And uh, so the speed is just like that. If I increase the speed, it just gets faster. You know, the faster it is, the more, um, the less you see then here because it's just too fast. Maybe just put 50 again or 50. Then we have the orientation. This makes more sense if we're changing the shape of our emitter. Currently the shape is a plane, but if we change this to surface, for example, you will not really see that much of a change. If we change this shape to be, um, let's say, a sphere, and now we change to say the speed to be something like 20, and then we say, well, instead of going in one, axis i wanted to go from the surface of this sphere right then just use surface and now you see that it's emitting for on the surface of the sphere now you might be wondering why are the particles going up well that's because by default that we have a force and that force is gravity and also the gravity is going towards the y axis in a positive direction but if you want something that is more like uh, normal gravity right that will be a minus one in here in this case or you know any negative number um, you can just use here and then they will fall down instead of going up so that's actually quite interesting because now it looks like a fountain so maybe if we change the alpha to be maybe something like this we actually go like this and then we change the color and it goes from this to this and perhaps just one second. So now you see that it kind of looks more like a, like a fountain or something like that. If we go back to axis here, let's just change the gravity again. We can also change the direction, right? We can redirect the movement to be maybe something like in the edge position, right? So if we increase this here, you can think of each of these as angles. So for example, maybe it will be like um, 90 degrees angle here. 
so it will go to this side and it will go up so you can think of this uh, as a clock so it goes like this to 90 degrees or in one axis or in another so it's like 90 degrees uh, positive or negative right and then we have in the y axis so it's the same right so if you think about this like this and we had maybe 90 here it's like it's going to rotate on this way right and then in this case it will rotate in this way so that will be 100 like 80 will be like to the bottom and 90 will be to one side so it's going to be in this in this side all right that's for the direction based on the orientation let's go back to surface and maybe let's go back to negative maybe something like minus four that's fine then we have a section here that is called forces and then another one that is called noise and then there is randomness um, so first let me show you um, what the noise is I just want to deselect this particle and then I just want to create another one pretty easily right and I want to increase the bit rate just a little bit and uh, perhaps this could be a smaller size this could be a constant size so now what I want to do is to add some noise, right? So I'm going to start adding some noise. You can see by default already something happens there. So maybe I can reduce the size. And now I can try maybe increasing the speed. Right. So you can see oh, something's happening already. Let's maybe add more particles, like 2,000 particles, a little smaller. So you can see that some, something is happening, right? Like what is happening is that the noise is a 3D noise that is being applied to the movement and you can see how the particles are now moving in a, an interesting way. So if we increase the lifestyle right now, um, you will see more of that movement happening over time. So now maybe let's change uh, the scale a little bit to be something like this. So now we see more like a fluid type of movement, right? And if we change the alpha to be something like it's in and out, so we don't see the initial beginning, it even feels more like a flow. We can perhaps change the color. Um, well, that's uh, that's nice. Yeah, all of them looks quite nice actually. Could be something like this or something like this, right? I'm gonna try something, like a simple purplish. Yeah, that's fine. You can play with the colors, of course, and you can get all sorts of different effects. Then we have a parameter that's called variation. So the variation is going to add, like, the word says variation to the movement, and it can make it feel a lot more random, it's kind of like an increase in the speed, and you see all of these very interesting behaviors. So you can reduce maybe the speed a little bit, and then increase the variation, and then you have a lot more more randomness happening in some of the particles. That's pretty interesting. So you can also change the type of the noise from that one to let's say something like this one. You can see that's a, that's a very interesting behavior. Uh, we can increase it to something like this perhaps. Now it feels uh, a completely different type of uh, randomness. And then there's also this other type of randomness which is called um, FPM. It's a different type of noise. And in this case, there is more like clusters, right? Clusters are happening. If you increase the variation, it gets even a little crazier. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's super crazy. <laughs> um, let's change the color a little bit here so we can see it um, different ways. So now if I go back here and I change the scale, you see how different this type of noise is. So you can really combine all of these values to find all type of um, behaviors and all type of movements. So we can also change the particle randomness by itself. Like each individual particle can have a little bit of a difference. So if we increase the randomness in terms of the scale, you will see that some of them will be smaller, some of them will be larger. And, uh, and then we have rotation, right? It changes basically the rotation of the particle. So this one is easier to see if we have a lot less speed, like that. Let's say we have something like that, right? And then 
you can see that each particle has like a little bit of a gradient there and now if i increase the rotation what's happening is like each particle is like rotating right by itself at the beginning it's a very different rotation let's increase the speed again do something like this and let's change the type to be curl so now we have this i actually like this a lot so let's see uh, how we can create now uh, some colliders, right? So perhaps we can create another emitter. This one is going to be like this. We can rotate this emitter perhaps 90 degrees. And we can change the gravity here to be maybe minus 4. Or just minus 1 for now. Let's put it here. And let's change the speed to be like 30. The lifetime could be 2. Let's say that this is going to be something like a water-ish type of thing, right? Maybe the speed could be a lot more. Maybe there should be more particles. So if you go to here again, you can see that uh, this is thing called particle force. And by default, you create one, it, it's going to create a particle collider. Now, when you choose a collider, the collider is automatically going to turn on all of the other particles. So for now, I'm just going to hide them, right? Except for the last one. And for this collider, what I want is to increase the size a little bit in here, this, like this, and like this. Maybe let's just make it more like this. So what I actually want is I want this to fall in this collider in a more natural way. So let's say this one, maybe that's too much. Maybe let's use 70 or 50. So now they're falling, but you can see when they bounce, it, they bounce like way too much. So there is this uh, setting here in the particle forces, which is called elasticity. You will only see this setting if you have a force attached to this particle, which is by default this one that I just created. So let's reduce the elasticity to be maybe something like 0 0.2. Now you can see that, you know, it doesn't really go that far. And now maybe I can increase the lifetime to be three instead. So let's see how that feels. That's pretty cool because now we can see that, you know, there is like a double bounciness there happening. So it feels a lot more, more natural. Now, if I increase the variation of this a little bit, maybe that's too much. We can also increase now the randomness of the scale, for example. And finally, the randomness in the rotation. And that's what you get in this case feels a, a lot different. What if you don't want a collider? What if you want a different type of force? Let's make, for example, this particle to point up again, something like this. Let's put it here. And now this force is gonna be different. This is gonna be an attractor. A attractor is literally just attracting the particles to this pointing here. So you will see how the particles are going from here to here. Now the tractor has a couple of settings, like the shape for example, we can change the shape and the range. So maybe I just want this force to only happen when it's inside this sphere, right? So if I get closer and get closer to there, you can see that when it's inside the radius, those particles are now being attracted into the force so you can create all sort of like gravitational effects like this you can see now only a few of the particles are being attracted to there you can also change the damping value and the damping value is like you know once they reach this point how much of damping happens there so you can reduce it there's no damping at all or you can just you know be a lot of them so that means that it will be like an overture that they will be even to the other side right so you can try playing with this value to get whatever you think is the best effect for you kind of like that actually right so that is pretty cool you can see how particles are being attracted let's see maybe more intensity so you can see even more how the damping is that damp damping works there i have more damping particles will be like literally like revolving around that point in there in space. 
seems very very interesting let's reduce the intensity now there is all right so there is another one that's called vortex right but for the vortex i want to create actually a new emitter so let me just disable this one and maybe disable this one too so i want to create a new emitter and this new emitter is going to be with a constant size and maybe a little bit smaller maybe there will be more more particles like that right so that's good and now i just want to create uh, another force and by default because it's a collider it's just going to collide and it's going to look a little crazy but let's just choose vortex instead right so now let's just move the vortex a little up right and uh, we can see that if we select the particles something is happening there it's not quite clear what is happening but definitely something something is happening so let's just move this down and Let's increase the intensity. And let's increase the size here and here. So you can see that as soon as the particles are emitted, now they're like spinning, right? They're basically like if like rotating around some gravitational force in the middle. But what we want is that we want them to continue going up, right? We don't really want them to stay there. So there's a couple of parameters that we can try. One is uh, aperture. Let's change the aperture you can see that now the particles are going up so starting to feel quite interesting let's increase intensity even more something like that you can see it from here and also let's increase the size on the y-axis right there so actually maybe that's too intense let's reduce the particle size a little so we can see it better and let's increase the lifetime so we can see more of them. And now let's move the particle force up so they stay longer in there. You can also change the aperture a little bit if we want to. That's really cool. You can see how these particles, they stay there and they just rotate around just like it's some sort of twister, right? And uh, we can change now the particles alpha fading here maybe this could be an easy now so it's a lot more softer at the beginning and then once again maybe this could be more like wind a sort of wind color and maybe something like that uh, or it could be just um just like a darker actually color maybe something like that and uh, we can increase perhaps the, the size increase here okay we have something that looks like some sort of weird um particles in there that's a uh, pretty pretty interesting so you can also change the particles texture or image right if you click here on image by default you will see some uh, images like i can change into this one for example maybe let me increase the size so you can see a little better it's like a different effect so let me just uh, delete this force for now. You can see that this one is slightly different. It's like some sort of pattern in there. And then there's other ones like this, for example. Or just like a flat dog. This is a slightly smooth. This is very soft. And then this one, which is the, the default. So if you change the rotation here at the beginning, uh, you will see uh, they look a lot more random. So if you're looking to build some sort of a smoke or something, that maybe could be a good idea. And like if I change the color of this from like very dark to something like this, and maybe use one of these colors, increase the size. You can see that looks a lot like a, some sort of a smoke. Um, so that type of uh, texture is good for, for that. It's like a space smooth, right? Maybe this one could be like just one. We can see there. Another thing that you can do with particles is to select a custom shape of the emitter of the particles. So for example, I can go here and select custom shape. And instead of the 
object now I can just set a depth in here so now my particle emitter has taken the shape of the depths so maybe I can disable gravity you can see how now everything is emitting in the same shape so this is really cool because now I can apply colliders and I can apply effects in here and it's taking the shape of the depths but it can also be any shape not just this one all right, that's how you can use the particle system on the spline to create different type of effects. I hope you like this tutorial. See you in the next one. Bye.